For a shining example of the power of vision and teamwork, look no further than the Canadian Light Source Synchrotron. This scientific research facility on the University of Saskatchewan campus is one of the largest and most ambitious scientific projects in Canada's history. Thanks to the electrons, which speed around inside its football field-sized ring, it produces intensely bright beams of light, light that can reveal important information about materials of every kind, much like a giant microscope. And this bright light source is now attracting some of the brightest scientific minds in the world to Saskatoon. Like Bill Tomlinson, a physicist and pioneering synchrotron researcher who left the synchrotron in Grenoble, France, to become executive director of the Canadian Light Source. We have as outstanding a local group of scientists in so many disciplines, outstanding, incomparable in the world at the moment. I believe that sincerely. And right here in Saskatoon, it's great. He, along with many other illustrious colleagues working at the Canadian Light Source, are now putting Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and Canada as a whole, on the map. The floor of any synchrotron and the floor of this synchrotron is tremendously exciting because of the range and the importance and the diversity of science that goes on on the floor and on the beam lines. That excitement was already in the air at its grand opening in the fall of 2004, the CLS attracted leaders in government and research, as well as major national media attention. The beams generated by it have the power to unlock secrets, to drive new discoveries, to bring the future to our very doorsteps. True to its original promise, the Canadian Light Source has been a hive of collaborative activity ever since. In its first year of operation alone, you could find biologists working alongside physicists to shed entirely new light on cancer research with the help of leading environmental scientists. You could also see chemists working with young students to test all new coatings for use in satellites and rockets. And while other teams of physicists were busy exploring the electrical properties of DNA... This particular beamline here potentially has a lot of interest to... Private companies were learning about how academia could collaborate with industry at the synchrotron. The place was literally humming. The synchrotron ends up being a bit of an enabling technology that brings people together because on any given day you can walk around the floor and there'll be somebody out of chemistry and somebody out of physics and engineering and medicine and maybe even something like social studies looking at ancient manuscripts or something on the floor at any given time all working together. While synchrotrons in general are known for nurturing scientific collaborations, the Canadian light source may be particularly prone to doing so. That's because, long before the first ground was ever broken on this project, the CLS was founded on vision and teamwork. The vision of a university that was already a leader in physics in the post-war period and that had built a linear accelerator as early as 1964, which is still used today to fire the essential electrons into the synchrotron. And the teamwork that brought together all levels of government as well as considerable corporate support. It shows how government universities and the private sector can work together to advance research and development. While owned by the University of Saskatchewan, this $174 million national facility came into being thanks to an unprecedented collaboration of federal agencies and departments, provincial and municipal governments, universities and industry, in addition to nearly $56.5 million from the Canada Foundation for Innovation. Even today, its operating funding is shared among the U of S, the provincial and federal governments, the CIHR, or Canadian Institutes of Health Research, and NSERC, the National Sciences and Engineering Research Council. And so, the carefully coordinated funding and considerable teamwork and vision that led to the building of the Canadian Light Source is still seen today. On the experimental floor, as many different experiments run simultaneously, and in meeting rooms as interdisciplinary teams come together to plan all new beam lines for the next phase of construction. The challenge now will be to use that teamwork and vision and attract more and more top scientists to make the future even brighter for the Canadian Light Source. If we can do that and people say Saskatoon, the synchrotron there, is a place I want to go to do my research, now that's the dream, absolute dream because that's what makes it healthy for many, many years. For Research News at the University of Saskatchewan, I'm Jennifer Weber.